Mahalo. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight for our March meeting of the Elizabeth Hawaiian Civic Club. So excited to welcome Kuipo Kumukahi, who's going to share with us some of the work that is happening at Hawaiian Music Perpetuation Society. And with that, I'd like to introduce Kuipo, and the floor is yours. Go ahead. Ah, mahalo, Dre. Uh, mahalo, everyone, and uh, aloha mai kako. It is a great pleasure and honor to be here uh, with uh, Princess Elizabeth Kahanu Hawaiian Civic Club. Um, I am from the Hawaiian Music, I mean, the uh, um, Hawaiian Civic Club, which is, of course, Hawaiian music based. I'm here to share about the Hawaiian Music Perpetuation Society. Um, a little bit of history. It was founded in 2020. We like to say it was founded by four mothers and no fathers. <laughs> and it was a group of friends uh, who got together and talked about the importance of Mele Hawaii. Um, yes, the composers, uh, the delivery of the mele is all, no, no one thing is more important than the other, but the history and the information that mele holds uh, is, is truly, um, in my opinion, the key to our mele and why that is important. Because one of the things is when mele, when the language was not um, used and banned, people continue to sing. And so nobody could stop our people from singing songs. Um, the other thing is um, some of the documentation that goes on inside of a mele, uh, place names that are no longer there. Uh, having and understanding the mele really takes us back to those place names that are that are so important and of course tied with the aina, right? In that, those places. So. So many different things and the so many uh, different um, reasons for Mele to be written. So we felt um, that we need to continue this perpetuation, preservation, and promotion of Mele Hawaii. Um, and I do have with me our executive director. So we just became a 501c3 in January of this year. And in the meantime, uh, our organization has been doing fun programs. For example, Mele on the Move. I don't know if you've heard about that, but um, in 2020, I was tired of not playing music anywhere and everybody was banned from going somewhere. So I said um, to the group, I said, let's get on the back of a truck and go through the Hawaiian homesteads with our, our pila and just ho'okani pila for all our kupuna and uh, the Aina Ho'opula Pula. So we did five homesteads on Oahu um, in, uh, sorry, was that 2021? Yeah, 2020. 2020, I'm sorry. And it was really a fun thing. And what we noticed that we were doing Facebook Live and we noticed that depending on what homestead we we're in, people were chiming in to say, hey, that's my auntie's house. That's where I used to live before. And I think in Nanakuli, we had about 22,000 hits. And that brought back a very uh, important place of lineal connections of Mele. And um, so that, that, that gave us more, um, how to say, more, more uh, mana'o to continue this program and how do we move forward. So, uh, of many programs that we've created, um, another one that happened in 2021 was uh, Nakupuna Nights. It was a takeoff from the old Moana Hotels um, event. I don't know what it was like, I wasn't born, but I had heard about this thing called Nakupuna Nights. And I said, we need to have this. And because I work at the Hyatt Regency as the Director of Hawaiian Culture and Community Relations, so we need to bring our kupuna back into Waikiki. Uh, so we did about four shows of Nakupuna Nights featuring kupuna performers, and the room was filled every single month. Um, not only with kupuna, but visitors who looked on and wanted to be a part of us. So, you know, it's, it's many folds, mele, that brings people together. And in the case of the the uh, in Waikiki is the fact that 
it's it's the way to keep our narrative moving in a non-confrontational space um, and speaking always from the place of Mele and then leading into more things like our Ali'i who lived in Waikiki and who composed Mele for their people. So this is the mana'o behind uh, Hawaiian music, the Hawaiian Music Perpetuation Society. Uh, we are moving into more events coming up in 2023. One in particular we um, did in the uh, February and March, and we're still doing it, is the, um, the themes of February and March theme. February, Mahina Olelo Hawaii, and March, uh, Mahina uh, uh, Manawahine, na Manawahine Hawaii. So Dre will be on our, our, our um, speaking panel next Friday, and it's free. So if you want to come, you got to get online, hmpshawaii.com, and just make your reservations. It's Manawahi, you come in, we start at 4.45 on a Friday. So we, this Friday we have Dodie Brown, Auntie Namaka Bacon's daughter, Kavena Pukui's granddaughter. She's gonna come and talk about song written for her, Kowae. You know the one, eh, Kowae, eh, eh, Kowae, eh. So Dodie's coming to do that and Nola Nahulu will be coming to talk on the music of Queen Liliwo Kalani and more. So you make your reservations, you come on in, valet your car, I'll take care of it. And um, we have a little mea ai mama that you can take home on behalf of the hotel. They, they, they provide a sandwich for you to take home and you know, be a part of this. And Dre will be on the following week talking about the Manawahine um, as she takes off as the Peliki Kena of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Club. So we look forward to seeing everybody and um, you know, my hila hila, just come and uh, be a part of us. Uh, we move it, and I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask our di uh, executive director, because she's shy, and I got to get her to talk, and not only me talking, because they got to practice. Uh, please welcome uh, our executive director. This is Janine Heleloa. So the, the name Heleloa, you know, it's the, the journey going to be long, yeah? So, <laughs> so this is Janine Heleloa. Go ahead, Tita. Aloha. <laughs> Um, mahalo. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so as, um, as Auntie mentioned, um, the organization was formed in 2020 and uh, we recently acquired our, we, we recently received our letter of determination uh, that was in January of this year. So we're very excited um, about the doors that that will open, but it hasn't, from the beginning, everything that we've done has been with our community in mind. And um, the purpose is to continue to preserve, promote, perpetuate yes. Mele Hawaii. And we do that through music events, as well as immersive, interactive Hawaiian culture experiences. Um, as you know, Auntie Kui was the um, Director of Hawaiian Culture and Community Relations at, at Puale Lani, and um, where the Hyatt sits. And she's brought us in to carry out all of her initiatives so she's our pole. She leads us. She uh, designs programs and is also our kumu. And, and, and we take what she gives to us and we share that with guests of uh, Ho'okela, the Hawaiian Heritage and Culture Center at um, Pu'alilani. So we have a wonderful opportunity to share our narrative as Kanaka with visitors from around the world. Um, and we met quite a few people in, in the last, we've been there since uh, the end of July, 2021. And um, in that amount of time we've hosted, oh gosh, on average, anywhere from 400 to almost a thousand people in the center, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, and we're open eight to three. But we're open to the public and, and we encourage our community members, um, our, our residents to come and visit. We've had quite a few homeschooling families that have come through because there isn't anything quite like Ho'okela that we know of, um, especially in Waikiki. So we know that Anti Kuipo is one of only three um, Hawaiian culture advisors in Waikiki and um, they're a dying breed and we don't want that to continue. So we've uh, been actively pursuing uh, healthy pilina with other organizations 
to uh, try and keep our, 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 our OPO home. And um, instead of running away, when I grew up, I know that we used to hear a lot, you know, you got to hurry up, graduate from high school and uh, get off the island because you guys, you got to get out of here so that you can have a future. Um, but we want to, we want to flip that script and let our, our, our young ones know that they can thrive right here in our backyard. Um, and so we've uh, created a partnership with uh, Julie Morikawa of Climb High, who uh, used to uh, work in the hotel hospitality industry and uh, saw the need to really come back home and let our, our young people know there's plenty of opportunities here. And and open the door, open the window, pull the veil back so that they can see so much uh, opportunities that lay ahead. And, and, you know, when we talk to some of the young people, we talk about hotel, everybody thinks, oh, bell, bell front desk, housekeeping, and housekeeping. No, you can run the hotel. You, you know, can own the hotel. And that too. So we want to make sure that we, we, you know, there's nothing wrong with the other jobs. We need everybody who can, who can participate. And it's important to recognize, you know, that there's, there's many, the, all the many parts that come together uh, that make a, for success. And, and um, what we hope to do as we continue along this path with um, music is to keep our voices alive, um, to keep our kupuna voices alive and to share their stories with others and, and that aloha that comes through in the mele and in the connections that we make. So thank you so much for having us. Yeah. And just uh, I just want to kind of back this up. So last end of 2022, uh, we had an event at the Hawaii Convention Center called the Songbirds of Waikiki featured Auntie Marlene Sai, Auntie Wainani Kanealii, Melvin Lee, uh, Karen Kiave Hawaii. And um, it was just a delight. I think Auntie Piwi was there too. So just a delight to see our kupuna, our kupuna wahine on stage performing something that they love, something that, you know, they, they're they so peely with that. And um, they look forward to that. Well, 2023, we are looking at the 20th anniversary of a program called Mali'o. So Mali'o will feature women who play their music, their pila, and sing. And they will come to us from Kauai, Maui, Hawaii Island, and Oahu. It will culminate uh, sometime, and we're still working on the details, sometime in um, uh, September, hopefully. So stay tuned. Come to our website, hmpshawaii.com. And stay tuned for all the programs that we're running. Yes, yes, yes please. Because at that Malio is going to be wonderful because all ages and just the, the ability for our women to come with their guitar, their ukulele, their upright bass, their piano, perhaps to sing for people, to sing for all of us. So we, we do fun things like that. So we invite you also to come to Ho'okela at the Hyatt Regency Waikiki Beach Resort and Spa. That's where um, Prince Kuhio lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Princess Kahanu as well and Queen Kapi'olani. So Waikiki is not without any history of our ali'i. It's everywhere. And we want to make sure that in this industry or this billion plus dollar industry that supposedly is the economic driver of Hawaii, um, doesn't go silent on who was here and our ali'i and the works they did. Mm -hmm. Because that is an important piece of who we are as Kanaka. Um, and I, and I, I'm just to piggyback off of what you said and, and what we do in Waikiki, also growing up in, in Hawaii, I, I'm a graduate of Kaimuki High School. Um, I would only go across the Alawai to Waikiki to swim and leave because I, I avoided Waikiki like the plague. It felt like it wasn't for us. Um, it, it was like their place, you know, everybody else, all those people that came from offshore, that's where they hung up. And we just didn't want to be around them. But what I've come to realize um, with anti Kuipo is that you know if if we're not there then who is yeah. and who is going to tell our story it shouldn't be anyone else but us but us and that's ours to tell it's not somebody else's so we we hold our place and auntie is wonderful she's a she's a great leader she 
she she poked that spear in the ground and we stand alongside her proudly to share our culture and, and our aloha with others. It is not an angry space. It is a place of learning and plenty opportunities. You know, we have lots of folks that come by that don't know anything about Hawaii. And then we have those that come by that know everything. So, you know, it's a it's a nice mix of, <laughs> of, of, uh, of people that come to share their time with us. Yeah, so, you know, um, I, like I said, uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, our, our website so that you know what, what's going on and be a part of us because we all have a music background with us. We all sang with our kupuna. And, and, and my, my claim to fame is that I sing in keys that have not yet been discovered. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my claim to fame. Of course, <laughs> sitting next to the song, the, whole, uh, the sweetheart of Hawaiian music, you know, it, it makes for a good, fun conversation and, a, and hilarious singing time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that, that, I, pre I think we covered pretty much of uh, everything we do. Uh, we're also looking to celebrate Prince Kuhio on the Hula Mount on the 26th. So stay tuned. Um, we're we're just sewing that up right now as we are speaking. So um, we look forward to celebrating Prince Kuhio in Waikiki as well. Yes. So in case you decide not to go out to Kapole, there's something gonna be, we'll have something. Yeah, we'll have hopefully. something. An we, alternative. Yeah. The, the more celebration, the better. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I just wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, Pomaya is online with us. So um, a program that was created between the Hyatt Regency and Iolani Palace. Uh, Hemele Lahui Hawaii. Um, twice a month, I I take my guitar and I go to Iolani Palace and I sing in the imprisonment room for at least three tours. And my thought behind that was people would come to understand who we are or our ali'i by hearing their mele. Mm -hmm. And it it's um it's really moving. So if you have a moment to uh, come, not because I'm there, but just the ideas and you can hear her music in the room. And uh, we've had many people, yeah, Pomai, that, um, you know, they, they come just to hear you. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it, it's just, it, moving is not even, it doesn't even give that much credibility to it. It's, it's extremely chicken skin. And because I've witnessed it, especially in, that room yeah yeah there's there's nothing nothing better and it's, it's um you know for me it's it's so highly spiritual and uh i'm I, don't get me wrong i'm just a delivery person that's all i am and and uh but you know all of her mana that 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 just continues to be in that room it, it's it's unbelievable so so please come and see us um when you can and like I said, just come, come Waikiki. I know, I know, nobody like go Waikiki, but that's okay. Just free valid. parking, valid, valid. Yes. I get them. I get them. <laughs> any questions? Thank comments? you guys so much. Yeah. Well, I know I have like choke questions because I want to know one, what key it is that you discovered, or what the keys that you see. <laughs> that, you know, it changes every time I open my mouth. <laughs> I'm in that key too. It's kind of sort of operatic. It's somewhere it's between hear it. J and. L-ish, somewhere around there. I mean, you know what? Maybe we need to start hakoing mele in those keys, you know? Right? <laughs> yep. Thank you so much. It's so good to know I might have one fan. Because <laughs> usually as soon as I start seeing everybody leaves. It's an electric fan. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think just hearing what you're, you've been talking about and not just the perpetuation of our mele and our music, but also, you know, making sure that presence of our music is in Waikiki. I mean, it just, I th I'm thinking about so many things, but I think, you know, as a Hawaiian Civic Club, as part of the association, we always are trying to figure out like, how do we help? What do you guys need us to do? What do you need our community to do to support the work that, that you do? And, you know, I hope one of the things is come to Waikiki and where people are playing live Hawaiian music, show up, have a drink, stay to support. Yes. Or it could be, you know, pick an instrument, pick a song, learn it. But what, what else, like, you know, those are very practical things that I think all our members can do, but are there other things? Like, are there challenges and barriers to keeping our music alive, especially in Waikiki or just in general? Like, tell us a little bit about some of those challenges and it might spark some inspiration from our members of, you know, what, what do we do to help? Okay. Um, one of them is that um, 
you know, there is nothing uh, that that is uh, that holds any business and um, hotels in particular to having Hawaiian on property. Yeah, it is the Hawaiian is a is a, a some somewhat of a sub amenity. So we with lack of a better description, there needs to be some kind of legislative move that says this Hawaiian Hawaiian must be carried out in these hotels, not just as a fluff or a just decorative tourism piece, but true space, true information, not only just signs and, and brochures, but live people having making music in Waikiki. And 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 under and under the umbrella of some quality controlling space, not through a uh, what do you call those those talent agents that pass off you know uh, a guitar with with these pedals that makes up a whole band of five people in the end that you hear and they're singing tiny bubbles and pass that off as Hawaiian, mm -hmm. you know. So so some kind of check and balance. I don't know what that is right now, but I do know that there's a there was a legislative move on plants. So if a if a hotel or business was changing up some of the uh, landscaping or remodeling, they had to provide 30% native Hawaiian plants on property like um, Kalua Oka or International Marketplace or uh, the uh, Alohilani Hotel. We need some kind of movement that's gonna hold fast to these big powerful money guns that, that hold us at bay to, to not, share or or be Hawaiian or you know like a restriction is that right. I don't know if that's a yeah. this might be something that um a resolution at convention in October can can address that, yes because was, as yeah. Hawaiians that's that's kind of the way to start it yeah. if yeah. there's nothing else you know not a, a marketing type ploy that can be done yes yeah. and that 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 is that's so needed um and then we run into issues where when Kuipo was teaching a class over at Kapiolani Community College several years ago, a Namele class, she tasked our group with um, calling up the hotels and finding out, do you have Hawaiian music? How often, how much does it cost? <clears throat> and most of the hotels we called, either they, most of them said they didn't have, but for those of them who said, oh yeah, we have Hawaiian music. And when we asked who the artists were, I know they're not Hawaiian. I know they don't sing Hawaiian. Um, but that's another thing. Hawaiian and island are supposed they're like the same thing. So legislation, I think, would be wonderful in a sense that we we got to get on the same page because um, people and that's another thing. How do how do people interpret exactly what Hawaiian music is? What is Hawaiian music? Is it the one who's singing it? Is it the one who wrote it? Is it the words? Is it the beat? You know, there's there's so much conversation we've had on this topic. And um, and, you know, it's hard to find Hawaiian music in Waikiki. And when we try to put it out, usually that's the first budget that gets cut. So uh, that's another thing that we're working on too, is, is how do you value Hawaiian music um, when you have, um, so HMPS is, is working very closely with Anti Kuipo to um, get together so to, uh, musicians um, and, and get them work, give them, get them, get them out there, get them heard. Um, put them in front of audiences. And then even that too, we have hotels that are still thinking, well, the um, A-class musician should be performing, you know, during dinner time. Well, our, our top-notch musicians are not dinner music. That's not background music. They are, a, and I, and I want to say this in the right way, it's, it's that when we have featured artists like Uncle Led, like Auntie Kuipo. When we have them there, it, it shouldn't be why everybody's eating and all this clanking is going on and they're singing. And they're loud and screaming. It, it and diminishes the, 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 the experience. So it also is an opportunity for us to educate um, hotel folks about the difference between the two kinds of music because there is a time and place for background music and and it isn't to diminish who those musicians are it's it's a matter of they know that this is going to be one song after another not so much engaging with the audience necessarily 
But when you come to a featured musician, uh, with an event with a featured musician, now you're talking about an entertainer, which also raises the bar on what we want to expect from our entertainers. And it's a it's a craft, it's an art. Not everybody can do it, um, and we want to celebrate them. So we're working with a couple of uh, different folks, putting together fair dollar amounts so that and being transparent so that they know exactly how much that musician is going to go home with and auntie brought it up you know we so many times we see throughout Waikiki in order to save a buck the kid is going to show up at the venue with his guitar and his little box with his little repeater and he plugged that sucker in and he press a button and he plays a tune and he press another button and he plays another tune and it translates into ukulele steel guitar bass um, another guitar player and and then the kid is playing the so it's a one-man band but then by doing that you're putting the steel guitar player, player out of work you're taking food the off his table player. the bass player off of you know you're taking food off their table the whole idea Hawaii music is connectivity it's about all of us together as a lahui yeah. it is to lift all not one it is all of us and and just and don't just do one because it's cheap now, you know, what are we sacrificing? What are we giving up? And, and we want to hold our place. So when we when we provide musicians for a, a group, when we provide music, musicians for um, an event, we will bring the whole band. There, there, it, it calls for four instruments. There are four of them there. And, and there is an entertainer. There is a like Antikuipo who could be that MC and, and engage with the audience and, and tell the stories. That is, I think that's a lost art too that um you know we want storytelling so when you had asked about what it is that can be done show up come to Waikiki show up let your voice be heard let the let the hotel know you enjoy this kind of music you want more of this kind of stuff now it, to some degree you know it it and I and this is what we want it to be so that they cannot ignore our voice that is the point Mm -hmm. We it, uh, we want to be yep. heard and 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 not silenced. So it needs to be consistent. Come and for yeah. us, you know, even with Auntie, we we have um we have her schedule. We'll make sure that we put it out on our website. But um, we want to support other musicians too. It's mm -hmm. finding out where they're at. Where's everybody playing so we can go support each other. And it's um, and I'm hoping to, we hope that that's that's what happens. Is it? collectively we we right. we grow together right when it rains all the boats right. in the harbor are lifted yeah it's not just one this is all of us so thank you yeah so that's that's what can can be done you know support continued support and um for you know there there there's an analogy uh, less representation equals eventual erasure so the less of us there is they erase us well, I really like that um, harbors and boat and maritime yeah. analogy, right? Rising tide lifts everyone. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that's some good advice for us, right? Because we don't know the industry. We don't know. But as lay people, we can show up. Yes. And yes. we can support people performing. But please keep us posted. Let us know, um, you know, when, when Hawaiian musicians are playing, when Hawaiian music is being played. And we will make that effort to show up. Oh, and I also think we should keep having this conversation, anticipating, you know, the Civic Club Convention coming up. It will be in Waikiki in October of this year at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Let's okay. plan on maybe doing a workshop to talk about some of these, these things that you're talking about. Like, yes. you know, what, what does Hawaiian music mean? Is it the musician? Is it the melee itself? Whatever. And I, I think the, this is a bigger discussion that, you know, the broader association, you know, wants to engage in. Yep. And I think the other thing is let's also talk about a resolution like Pomai had suggested, yes. but also think about like, what's the low hanging fruit, mm. right? Like what's a, what's a low hanging fruit goal that we can all kind of work toward that'll make a difference in this work to perpetuate our music. And mm -hmm. then what are some of the bigger goals, right? That, you know, we maybe not going to get next year or the year after that or after that, but things that we can make incremental progress, mm -hmm. you know, year over year. Yep. So Let's keep uh, talking about that. And, uh, you know, I want to see if any of our other members have questions. I don't know, Pomai or Auntie Peewee, um, if any of you have questions. If you do, go ahead and unmute and ask. Okay, this happens all the time. No one unmutes because no one has questions. <laughs> but 
I, I, I just, I, I, I just, I'm very ahead, supportive yeah. of the program. And because mm -hmm. I have um, had the pleasure of being with Janine and, uh, and Kuipo, I strongly support their intentions. And I, I think part mm -hmm. of it is when Janine mentioned, how do you address what is Hawaiian music? Mm -hmm. Because you have the different age groups. And I would also um, be supportive of a workshop for convention because I, I think there's much to bring to the table. Mm, yes. Definitely. Yes. Mahalo. And it's okay if we get a little uncomfortable in that conversation too, because I'm sure we're going to have very polar views on that. Um, but that's okay. It, that's a, that's the whole point. We need to talk and we work it out. out. Yep. Anybody else? Um, yeah, no. So I, I have a question. So our club, we need to still pick our club song. Mm. We've been chartered for almost four years and we still don't have a song. And so I think we've had some ideas, uh, you know, about Kualeleni, about Kuhio, about, and, you know, we know Kelly Ihulu Mamo was written for Elizabeth Kahanu. But if you, and, and you can think about it and let us know, but if you guys have any mana'o or suggestions for us as we think about a club song, we're very open to it, especially since this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hikino, yeah. can do. Yes. Auntie Pee, we get question? Auntie Pee, we get question? No, no, thank you. I, I just, I really enjoyed this um, session this evening. Thank you for all your mana'o. And, and I think it's an excellent job for us to have a, um, you know, be, you be one of the committees and we can have people attend and just talk story on that particular committee and all that you're doing. That's awesome. Mahalo. Oh, mahalo, Auntie. Thank you very much. Beautiful. All right, well, Going once, going twice. If anyone else has questions, now's the time. Um, yeah, I got a quick question. Yeah, go ahead, Max. Um, you know, with all this talk of, of bringing back the presence of, of Hawaiian music to Hawaii Key, right? To you know, what what do you folks think is a way that you know, experienced folks like you? You got, you got muted. You got muted, Max. And and reconnect with the with the music of our people. I I'm sorry. We you got cut off in the middle of your question. Could you repeat, please? I, I, what What are some ways you guys think that um, you know we we can get our our younger folks like me and school age children to, to really take interest and, and reconnect with you know our, our, our traditional mele our you know the music of our people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's an excellent I think that's an excellent question. Um when it comes to I think it has to do with exposure too. Auntie had a, a great point. We had a very lengthy discussion regarding music and um how it sounds different now. And, and I think we kind of wheedled it down to uh, possibly the motivation for recording music. Um, you know, our kupuna, when we listen to the songs that they sang, it was, you can almost hear the joy and, the, and, 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 and sometimes the pain um, that came through in their voices when they delivered this, this mele to us. Um, you, it was easier to connect with them, um, even if we, you know, we 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 weren't alive to see Maki Ailana, but you know now uh, uh, listening to the song and just the playfulness, and this goes through uh, for most melody that we've heard. You hear the the heart of the of the deliverer as well as um, the composer. You know, when, when we listen to Mele, I think now what we find that that the disconnect sometimes is, you know, we got it's it's expensive, you know, right? The cost of living is expensive. So sometimes our young people's motivation may be more influenced by making money um, than it is to uh, to perpetuate a, a tradition. And and mm -hmm. and I think that's something that 
you know, we can't take it away from them. If 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 the if the kid cannot eat, if the kid, the family is struggling, you cannot tell them, hey, you gotta sing, you know, traditional Hawaiian music. And you know, we're not trying to hammer anything away, but it's you, we have to meet needs. So I think this is a much bigger picture um, in terms of exposure. You know, the internet. My goodness, you know, there's so much stuff there, but it's almost like we have to collectively to recognize the value of the music that has been recorded and 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 um and continues to be played or it, it needs to be us that needs to continue to play it and every time we sing to recognize you're breathing life back into those words and you are now the vehicle to continue that um perpetuation one of the things i think is really great is to know backstories because you know, it's one thing to know the song. It's a whole other thing to understand the, 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 the situation, the environment that it was written in, who wrote it, for what reason, for whom. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, there's, it's like it, it brings, it kind of breathes new life into the song. And it's like, um, and I think that may help our young people too, to understand the backstory. And then perhaps that's also another way to connect to our kupuna. Because not, we know too, now, nowadays not all, well, people have the have the privilege of having their kupuna in their home, because um, that multi generation multi generational living is also it's it's a um, thing of the past almost. So so you know we we you know this is a way for us to continue that connection, right. and then for those that don't have their kupuna around, th that we also we all you know that's our it's all of our kuleana you know to to pick up that oama and and work alongside of them and help to encourage them and teach. And there's, so this, I think there's lots of opportunity there. I think that, um, you know, and it's about, they look to us too, you know, um, because at one point we were all younger. We, the music that we listened to was probably not the same music that our parents listened to or, or you know, however that, that, that usually worked in every generation. So it's a, uh, it, but I notice that the older I get, the more I can appreciate what was there before. And I think that just goes to show like, you know, how sometimes um, hindsight is twenty twenty. So we, we learn that as, as we get older, that there's so much Ike mm -hmm. and, and um, how do we, how do we harness that and share it? Um, it's a great discussion to have. I think it's, it's, it, it brings, yeah. And one of the programs that we are starting to uh, work with is, uh, kids in school, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I you know, and it, it could be a problem that there's not enough of us, but if we could get um, programs in our Department of Education or any school and bring Mele, it doesn't matter if the children are Hawaiian or not, but the 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 beauty of the Mele is, you know, is is so important to share because it's unlike any other music in my experience from around the world. Yeah. So we hope we hope to um we have one school that we're gonna start to work with soon in, in um in uh, July, uh Kalikiki. Yeah, so that and which is really interesting. And that's another thing too. You know, we we find ourselves smack dab in the middle of tourism, yeah. which is which is kind of represents everything that went wrong in Hawaii. So much that went wrong in Hawaii here, um, and then and then we were approached along this our path, and you know we don't choose it. This is Kiakua. We we yeah. get a phone call from somebody who is saying, "Hey, would you folks be interested in teaching the kids here? Just know that they're ninety five percent military." And I'm like, "Gee, tourism, military, wow, yeah. it must be a sign because we wouldn't have picked those. We wouldn't have picked those demographic, but." Okay, what? But, that, what, but yeah. that doesn't mean that doesn't mean we cannot we you know that we end there. We right. We just don't end there. We have to take those are models, and we just need to get it out there. So I don't know if that means eventually working with the Department of Education or just any school, private school doesn't matter. Like uh, Punahou has now Kimo Alama there mm. with Mele, and and I think it's great. I mean, yeah. we should do more of those. Yeah. Uh, again, funding is an issue, but. You know, with the help of civic clubs, perhaps these pods of musicians and artists can can hui together, and maybe HMPS helps to start and and get funded so that that information just keeps going out. And by the time they reach college, you know, it's the back of their hand. They don't have to you know learn melee from scratch, which is what happened to me at, mm. at in college. You know, there are classes to take in college, so. 
you know, we, we, we're small steps, but large leaps. Yes. That mean? <laughs> and, and it's not that we've forgotten about our own backyard because no. we, 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 we love our people. That's where Mele on the move was born. It was because we needed to take care of our backyard first. Yeah. We take care of our people first. And that's, we haven't lost sight of that. It's just interesting to see the doors that continue to open. And, and we know that we're just going to keep walking then. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Just keep yep. moving forward. Yeah, so so I, hope, hello. I hope we answered your question. Sorry, that, that was kind of a long <laughs> answer to a short question. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Mahalo. Mahalo. Anybody but else? I think you guys brought up a really good point, right? Just about like learning the backstories of our songs and stuff. But, yes. you know, so unless you're a student at Kamehameha and the composers come and teaching it for song contest <laughs> or you're in an academic right. setting, you know, you're taking a, um, you know, a class in, in a university setting, um, you know, it's hard to find resources with accurate information about these backstories. And if you're not, you know, kind of in that field, mm -hmm. it's hard to find people, right, to, um, to learn. And so I think, you know, for, for most of us, we're stuck with like huapala.org, right? Mm -hmm. And like the five or six, you know, lines that are at the bottom of every song. Right. But do you guys have any insights into, you know, people want to learn and people want to, you know, do that as part of this effort to perpetuate music. Mm -hmm. What are some resources that you guys can recommend whether it's book or, you know, go talk or, you know, talk story with this person or, you know, just whatever. What, what are your thoughts on how we can learn? Yeah. Okay. So, so one of, you know, the, one of the resources is uh, the Hawaiian newspapers. So Awaya Ulu organization, and I'm sure if you send them an email, if you want to know something specific about a piece of uh, melee, um, they can locate that for, but that is, you know, very, um, uh, you know, you got to be able to at least really speak and understand the melody because, you know, don't have diacriticals, but um, they they come out of the newspaper. So that's one. Um, another place um, I like to look at is the old songbooks, like the Lina Machado songbook. I think it's out of print, but in there, though, though there's some very interesting stories and you hear it right from the composer or... Um, I don't think there's a comprehensive book on uh, Kavena Pukui, but if you can get a collection of her mele, you know, to me, that's those are great places. Helen Deshae Beamer, there's a book that was put together um, on her behalf of her mele. So those kind of backstories. Um, go ahead. And then I have one, Kupuna. Kupuna, really. yeah, go talk because, to Kupuna. Yeah. Because exactly. um, it is, they, you know, they're living, they're breathing. And while they're here, this is where we need to, yeah. this is how we make that connection. So, you know, Auntie Ipo is, is a walking encyclopedia. And what is so beautiful, what I've learned from her is that connectivity. We can talk about, we can talk about something. We did uh, a program not too long ago called Heleno Emalani. Actually, well, it was yeah. last year. And um. She was taught, we wanted to present Mele in honor of Queen Emma, and we were at Hanaya Kamalama. And so uh, Auntie took the Heleno Emalani book and looked through it and noticed that there were several songs, um, several uh, songs that didn't have Mele or musical notation and um, never heard before. So at that time, um, Kaupena uh, Wong was still alive. And so she reached out to him and she said, you know, may I, I, I like to put melodic lines to these, to these songs, to this poetry. Um, is that okay? Would that be Pono? And his response was, he said, do it because otherwise nobody would know the song. And, and I think so. that is so important. I love, and I love the fact that she went and did that. We've seen examples where, you know, you get family and, and how else would you know? That's the thing. Yeah. How would you know who to call? Um, Cause I, in my mind, I don't know. I, so everything, you know, everything that I learned about music and about um, this and that part of it, yeah. Asking permission is so important. And I think that's something that is also overlooked too. And, and something that we need to pass on generationally, generationally, because, you know, kids hear something, oh, yeah, yeah, let's just go do it this way, and we'll go whip it up this way, and we'll do this to it, but, but there was a reason it was done that way, and we've had some people that said that they do, um, they have taken 
songs. Uh, we had a question, uh, Auntie had a question not too long ago by students who said, there's all this uh, melee that, that, that are, you know, they're in chant form. Uh, would it be okay to go ahead and put melodic lines to it? And you had an answer to that. Yeah, it was, your, what were your intentions? But you see, the difference was the questions I was asking Kaupena was this, this melee was not written by Queen Emma. Mm -hmm. Okay, these were written for Queen Emma by the people of Hawaii. The question the other students had was, they want to put melodic lines to songs written by Ali'i. And I, I felt, no, that's not our place to put the melody line to what the Ali'i has said. And, and the reason for that is because much yeah. of the Ali'i were already schooled in, yeah. in, in, in their, in their, in their musicality. Yeah. So they... Had they had wanted melodic lines, they would have done it themselves. Yeah. So it, it's almost sacrilegious in a sense yeah. to, to take the, but if it's written for the Ali, that would be okay. And see, yeah. and that makes perfect sense, but people. I have the I have the privilege of getting to talk to Auntie and, and getting that information, but I understand where she's coming from. So um, I think that's a, that's an excellent point. I mean, you know. And then what is the motivation? Yeah, so yes. the motivation behind uh writing the melodic line for the ali'i um poetry uh, and my my reason for wanting to do it from the the people standpoint for queen emma i thought was very different because people loved emma and they wanted to to you know, lift her up and show their love, and that's what I wanted to do: is show my love back. I didn't write the message, but you know, I can I can continue to carry that over in in melodic lines. So, and uh, thank you to Kaupena Wong for um, you know giving me the honor to do that. So that's the yeah. difference. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'll check one more time if our members have any other questions. And if not, um, if you guys have any closing remarks, go ahead. But we're just so grateful to have heard all of these, this manal that you guys have. And everyone come to the Hyatt next week, Friday. I'll be there. Hopefully other yeah. people show up yeah. and are interested yeah. to hear about, you know, what we're doing in the civic clubs. But yeah, thank you guys so much. And we'll be there Friday too. So come to come this Friday and then come next Friday too. And then the Friday after you're there, Jay, is... um. We're going to close off this month with a music concert, concert featuring Auntie Kuipo and um, Auntie Karen Kiawe Hawaii. And they're going to be telling stories and they're going to be singing songs. So there's a perfect opportunity. Come to Waikiki. It's free. Um, Ken Valley, uh, just register online so we know how many people to expect. And it, that's going to be 530 to 7 on Friday night, uh, March 31st, I think it is. The last, <laughs> the last Friday. Friday. <laughs> mm -hmm. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Well, I will add that to my calendar. But thank you guys so much for spending, you know, this Pohana hour with us. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, mahalo, mahalo. Thank you to our mahalo. members. Yes. And um, you're welcome to join our club meeting next month. We're uh, welcoming Kaleo Manuel, the deputy director for Commission on Water Resource Management, a very important role in taking care of our water resources and our yes. life. So thank you guys. Thank you everyone. Have a great Thursday and have a great weekend. Mahalo. Yes. Nui. Mahalo di ako. Aloha. 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 Aloha.